it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I want to feature some Faber-Castell products and the main product I'll be featuring today is their gelatos which are basically a pigment stick that you can use either by themselves or you can use them with water like I will be doing today. I'm going to be using the gelatos with the Hello Lovely stamp set from Concord and Knife. I mounted it into my Misty tool and stamped it onto some Canson XL watercolor paper and I used some Barely Beige ink from Simonson Stamp to do my stamping. In this bowl here I have a variety of different gelatos. I have both the Pastel collection and I have the Iridescent collection. So basically Faber-Castell has a variety of different gelato types. I have the two like I mentioned already. The difference between these two are that the iridescents have a shimmer to them. They have like almost like a iridescent sheen to them. And then the other gelatos, the pastels, are more of a matte finish. They don't have the shimmer. So here you can see side by side the comparison between the two. These gelatos are in a little bit almost like a lipstick tube and you twist the top to get the stick of pigment to come up further in from the canister. I'm going to apply them down onto some cardstock. You can use both cardstock, watercolor paper, any type of medium you prefer. But I'm applying those two down. The yellow color is the pastel, which are the matte, and then the pink one is the shimmery iridescent ones. So this is a good example of the difference between the two. And again, there are a variety of different styles that Faber-Castell has of these gelatos. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing some watercoloring and I've already stamped my image down onto my watercolor paper. I'm going to start off watercoloring now. I'm going to be using the Faber-Castell gelatos as a watercolor medium. So I'm going to apply them down onto some scratch paper. I find this the easiest way to be able to create with these gelatos to, for some watercoloring. You could of course create backgrounds with these and just apply the gelato straight onto the paper. But because I want to color an image with them, I'm going to pick them up off of the scratch paper and they react with water beautifully. Now bear in mind that I'm using quite a few of the pastels here. So the coloring is going to be light so I need to make sure I use multiple layers to build up a more intense color. As I'm coloring I'm applying a little bit of color to the areas that I want to be darkest and then I'm fading it out with a water brush. The water brush by the way is also from Faber-Castell. It's a really handy water brush. It's got a barrel in it that can extend further out so it becomes a much larger brush that can hold quite a bit of water. As I'm painting, I'm wetting the areas in some cases and applying the color down and then fading it out. This is creating some really nice dark areas in the centers of these flowers by using this technique. I'm also using a variety of colors here. I'm using not only the pastels, but I've also mixed in some of the iridescent colors as well. So for instance, the darker pink that you see on those flowers, that is the iridescent color. The lighter colors of the largest flower are the pastels. On the leaves here, I'm using both a mixture of the pastels and the iridescents. I use the pastel green for the lightest color of the green and then the darker shade I added from the iridescents. Here I'm coming in with that second layer of color. I'm using those same colors that I had used for the first layer, but I'm just basically building up extra depth with these colors to create a more intense and more contrasted image. As I'm adding the color around the different areas, you're going to see that the ink, which is the Barely Beige ink from Simon's Stamp, is capturing some of the color to make it a little bit darker. So it almost stains the ink and the ink kind of turns the color of whatever you put on top of it. This ink is one of my favorites for using for no line coloring because of the way it reacts to the color that you add on top of it. So as you can see as I apply for instance this green down onto these leaves, you can see that the lines of the leaves are turning that same green and giving a really nice darker hue to the image. Now I'm going to intensify that a little bit more later on and I'll show you how I did that. But I do want to mention that this ink is really great for no line coloring because of the way it reacts to the pigment that you apply on top of it. Here I'm bringing in an even darker shade of pink and I'm adding just a little bit more contrast to the center of that flower because I felt it was a little too light. Now these gelatos layer beautifully so you can go back over top of them as I'm here doing 
with the smaller flowers and add additional contrast and you get beautiful layering. The colors blend out really nicely. It works best if you apply the color that you want for the first layer and then let it dry and come back after that layer has dried because when you start to add too many layers of the gelatos, just like with any other watercolor, the paper starts to pill too much if you add too much pigment and water all at once. Now that I've gotten a lot of the coloring done, I'm coming in with that same water brush and adding a few more finer details. I went over top of the stems of the leaves. I'm going over the top of the splatters on the card itself. Those are part of the stamp when you stamp this Hello Lovely cluster onto your paper. And so then at the time that I was filming this video, this is what I ended up with. This is where I was by the time I, you saw that last part of my clip. So I needed to create a background behind this flower to give it a little bit more lift off of the card. It looks beautiful as is, but I wanted it to be a little bit more contrast and I wanted it to have a little bit more of an oomph. So what I did was I took a gray and caramel colored gelato, mixed the two together on a piece of scratch paper and used that to paint a very pale background behind the flowers. And that gave it a little bit of interest and made it pop off the card really, really nicely. And the other way I wanted to give this image a little bit more detail was to stamp back over top of it with that same Barely Beige ink. And I was able to do this because I did not remove the stamp from my Misty stamping tool and I hadn't even removed the paper. I had left the paper into the Misty while I was coloring and I was holding it down with my magnet. And that was really, really great because that allowed me to go back over top and stamp this a couple times in that Barely Beige ink and that intensified those lines of the image. And I'm going to do one more thing before I finish up this card to get those lines a little bit more detailed. Speaking of detail, I want to add a little bit of shading underneath some of the areas of the images to create a little bit of a drop shadow. I picked a gray Prisma colored colored pencil that matched the grays that are in the background. And I'm going to just kind of go around some of the images and add a little bit of a drop shadow behind some of these pieces. I'm not making it absolutely perfect, but it was good enough that it gave the idea of these images being dimensional. Now another product Faber-Castell has is the Artist Pit Pen. And Artist Pit Pens are basically India ink in a pen form. And they come in a variety of different tips and sizes. I'm using this one here, which is a bit of a brush nib. And this works really, really nicely. And it also matched really nicely with the colors that I have in my flowers here. So I was going to be using this as a way to be able to add a little bit of darker interest and detailing to some of the fine lines on this flower image. So here you can see I'm going over top of some of those lines in the center of the flower and darkening those up and that really helps that flower come alive. Another place I used it was I added it into the center of the smaller yellow flower just to give it a little bit of extra detail. I also have a gray version of this pen. This one has the same brush nib and I'm going over some of the finer details of those purple leaves and that also added a little bit of extra interest to the florals. So here's a close-up look of the finished coloring and how those beautiful details of the flowers come alive because of not only the ink that we used but also how the ink reacted with the gelatos and how we were able to use those artist pit pens to create the dimensional look on these images. So to finish off my card, I stamped a sentiment from Hero Arts' You Are Loved stamp set, and I also added a few Nouveau drops on top of those dots that are part of that Hello Lovely floral arrangement. I die cut the panel with our new Simon Says Stamp Wonky Stitches rectangle dies, and I mounted that onto a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock. So I hope today's video has given you some inspiration on using the Faber-Castell gelatos. Thanks so much for watching this video and please give it a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed, be sure to check out these other two videos that you might find interesting. You can subscribe to our channel and click on the link to visit our blog. Thank you again for stopping by and spending some time with me. I will see you again very soon. Bye!